So based on how many time periods ahead you forecast, your forecast approach could be dynamic or static. And there are lots of confusion about what these two are actually. So I'm going to now explain to you how they work. So first we go through the static forecast approach. So here we see again 10 data points. This is for simple demonstration purpose, of course. And here what we see is a one step ahead static forecast. So here what you see is that initially we divide our data points into two training sample and test. So we divide it kind of here. But now here you see that what we do is, so from here we forecast only one period, okay, only one. But then when when we have a next new data point available, for instance this one, we again forecast only one period ahead. Again, when we have another data point available, we only forecast one period ahead, right? And that's how we keep moving. We always forecast one period ahead. So that's what is simply a static forecast approach, okay? So in a static forecast approach, it's normally that that's how the business works. So let's say if I'm forecasting Bitcoin price today, so I will use all the data I have until today and I'll forecast tomorrow. And when, I have the, when I'm in tomorrow, if I have the data of tomorrow, then when I'm forecasting the day after tomorrow, I'll use all the data points until tomorrow. When I'm forecasting next day Bitcoin price, I'll be always forecasting in a static forecast approach. You know, it may happen that I am interested to forecast Bitcoin price for the next whole one week. So I, have, I, want, to, I want to forecast use, using daily data, but I want to forecast for the whole new one week. And then how would I do that? So that's when we actually we will need these dynamic forecast models. For instance here, so here we show a dynamic forecast model with five step ahead forecast. So we have data until this period. Okay, this is our training data and we don't have data after this point. And here you see we're forecasting first only this data point. Okay, so although we will forecast all the five days, it will actually forecast like one by one, right? And then it gets you to the fifth point. Okay, so we will see, so if we are using an R or something like that, you will see we just give one command and then we get all the five days. But in principle, it's working one by one, okay? And the demonstration here shows how it works one step at a time, okay? So using this data, it will forecast this, this next day. And here you see, if you are forecasting only the next day, only one period ahead, the forecast of dynamic and the forecast of static is always the same, okay? But it becomes different from the second data point. So here, if you look here, what we are doing is, in dynamic forecast, we will be now using this forecasted value here, a data point already for our model to estimate the next data point, okay? So now you see here, we are using kind of a forecasted value to forecast the next step ahead. But in, in the static, we are always using real data, okay? The data, when the data becomes available, we are using only that data. But in dynamic forecast, we are using a forecasted value, okay? And then we have this data point here. So we forecast it in the second step, we forecast this data point. But then now we are using this data point here and also this data point here. And then using all this in our data estimation procedure, we estimate this data point. And then in the next step, we will use this here, this here, and this here. And using all these models, we will forecast this one. And similarly, again, using this data here, this data here, this data here. So see that all these values are actually forecasted values, all these four of them, okay? And then we use them to forecast this one. So in, in the dynamic forecast, we use previously forecasted values to forecast the future. But in the static forecast approach, we are always using real data and then forecasting the future, okay? So that's the main difference between dynamic and static forecast models. I would normally use static forecast model for like uh, weekly data, daily, daily data, operational planning data, okay? But when I'll be making some strategic plan for the 20 years or 30 years ahead, then I'll be using dynamic forecast models. And normally for the out sample period, the static forecast models works better than the dynamic forecast models. I will use dynamic more or less when I'm forecasting very long term. And normally the long term forecast do not really perform as, as good as the short term forecast because many of the things that affect uh, different, for different variables uh, change over long term. There could be technological issues, uh, economic issues, 
Uh, and now, like, as we can see, this coronavirus kind of issues can also have an effect on uh, many economic variables. Long term forecasts really become tricky. In the next video, I'm going to explain the expanding and rolling forecast window concept.